What do the rich buy that the poor don't even know is available for purchase? Post by Muad Dib. My first ever gold, thank you. Kidnapping insurance. Can confirm. I worked for a place where the CEO was very hands on and would oftentimes fly to countries that were less than stable to sell the product. In case of kidnapping, we had insurance for him, for anyone else that traveled with him that might get grabbed, and contingency plans in place for what we needed to be doing and who to contact in case this happens. Private jet timeshares. For those not quite rich enough for their own private jet, or those rich people wanting to be a bit frugal. The really rich motto, if it fly, floats or f you rent it. Time. All that crap you do, commuting, grocery shopping, cooking, cleaning your house, waiting on hold, paying bills, all those chunks of your life that are eaten up by minutia, rich people buy out of all that routine garbage. Time is all you really get in your life. Rich people buy it back. Honestly my first thought. When I figured out I could pay people to do my chores for me I felt like I hacked the system. Something they do that most people don't know about is buy entire libraries at once. My sister used to work at a bookstore, and told me someone came in and wanted to furnish their library with a library-size purchase of books. They just wanted cherry-picked bestsellers left to the discretion of the people working there. It sounded wild. Some wealthy people also buy books as decoration, with no intent of reading most of them. They buy books from wholesalers by the linear foot, specifying how the books look on the shelves size, color, material of spine, etc., without any regard for what the books actually are. They just need to fill wall space in library, office rooms in their homes. If you're willing to fork out $35,000 for the player and $500 per showing, you can watch films that are currently in theaters in your own private home theater. Wow who would have thought a private showing is only twice as much as a normal movie ticket. Landing 747s in small airports. I grew up around Lexington, Kentucky. The region is huge on horses, particularly thoroughbred horses. The entire city is surrounded by horse farms, and these farms breed some of the best racing horses in the world. The rich and famous will often come here to buy thoroughbreds to add to their breeding stock. One such person is a sheik from Dubai, I think, who owns his own private 747. Now the local airport isn't rated for 747s, and it's not legal to land one there unless it's an emergency. The sheik doesn't care though and lands his 747 there anyways. The airport fines him every time he does this, which he is totally fine with paying. I've been told that many of the upgrades to the airport over the years were almost entirely funded with money from those fines. In London rich people figured out it was cheaper to just park on the streets illegally and just pay the fines every day than to pay for parking in the city. So the city started clamping cars, so the rich people started paying people to go and pay the fine for the car to be unclamped before they wanted to leave. <laughs> Underage socks parties on private islands. Don't forget, Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide. Private boarding gate at certain airports. Complete with showers, a spa, full bar, lounge, food, a bed, gym, sauna etc. Total privacy. Your luggage is scanned and taken through security by a concierge, and you're driven to the plane in a BMW 8 series. LAX has them now. Hello, yes, I would like to order some wealthiness just so I can have access to the private boarding gate. Yes, I'll hold, thank you. Specialized household staff. When someone is truly mega rich, running their household takes the same complexity as running a small to midsize company, and management is skilled and compensated accordingly. Don't think butler, think head of operations at a luxury hotel, the staff that household managers oversee can be really specialized as well. For example, Larry Ellison has his own personal curator to oversee his collection of Asian art. They do things like Asterisk advise on the purchase and sale of art in his collection Asterisk oversee storage and display of art housed on his property Asterisk oversee process of lending art for storage and display at museums. The curator will often have their own staff to conduct actual conservation work. Art transport, art installation, etc. So if you've already got an in-house crew of seven people focused on your art collection alone, imagine how big your entire household staff is. 
That's why you've got a household manager. Everyone knows about mega yachts, but the very rich also enjoy their own trains, or at the very least private super luxurious train cars. With their budgets it isn't expensive to rent space on freight lines and an engine, assuming they don't own their own. Sometimes a group of friends will hook their private cars together and motor around a continent having a big party. Now I am imagining some fat cat in his luxury train car between a bunch of loads of coal and some hobos in an empty boxcar. Pet cloning. Ex-boss was getting his dog cloned for $100,000. Entire floors of hotels are multiple floors. Entire restaurants. Chefs from literally any restaurant in the world to cook for them, wherever they are. I saw all of those things done by a prince of Saudi Arabia, we estimated it cost him $50,000 just for the one private meal in our restaurant, given that he won. Had the top four floors of our hotel booked for the hundreds of staff to take care of him, his wife and his two kids, plus likely some concubines, if I'm being honest. As someone in this part of the world, being rich equals the number of people who work for you. 2. He paid $30,000 just to close our restaurant for one meal. 3. Flew his favorite chef from New York to Orlando to cook for him, on his private jet, and then back again. Of course, it was likely the other private jet he had just for his staff, not for himself or his family. 4. Make food our entire staff, all the kitchen staff, all the federal, state and local security and him, his wife and his two kids. I have posted the entire story somewhere else in the past, but I couldn't find it easily. I had a buddy who taught ski lessons to another Saudi prince's little kid and had some nearly unbelievable and yet similar details during his interactions with them. That kid had an entire team around him or probably 10 staff, plus vehicles, snowmobiles, a helicopter, and so on. I later met a guy who worked on an ultra-luxury 300-foot yacht and served Bill Gates and his wife, among other super-rich people. Their primary job was to operate without interacting with them, or at least as little as possible. This shows you, in some sense, that having people around you doing stuff you need to be done but doing it invisibly is another perk of being rich. Edit, added some details and additional stuff. A billionaire spending $50,000 a night, every day of the week, for an entire year. Is about the same ratio as a guy with $1,000 in the bank spending $18 over the course of a year, or 20-ish cents a night. Edit, uh, $73 over a year. Sorry I was slightly intoxicated and tired when I wrote that. Point still stands, though. I had a buddy who hired a driver, got him to get a chauffeur's license, and then made sure his Jaguar was long enough to meet criteria as a limo, and then he could legally drink in the backseat. When I traveled with him internationally, someone met us at the door when we were dropped off, and they walked us to our plane. None of that customs, security stuff occurred. Private performances with big-name artists. I was on a yacht in the Virgin Islands and some mega yacht owner pretty close to us had Christina Aguilara flown in to perform for his guest on the mega yacht. We were close enough to see the performance, not close enough to pretend to be part of the party. A platinum retriever. And here I am with my bronze retriever. I'm so poor I can only afford a real retriever. Asterisk edit, I thought a platinum retriever was a platinum statue of a dog. Turns out there really is a retriever called Platinum. It's beautiful and I still can't afford it. A person to go to jail for you in your stead. This is a known phenomenon in Latin America but I imagine it happens in other places as well. Certainly amongst the Yakuza it happens. I knew a guy who did 8 years for his boss and got paid. You can buy houses ready to move in only with a suitcase. These house are more than fully equipped. Everything is already there like the whole furniture, glasses, knives, forks, spoons, tissues and toilet paper, towels, toys and games for the children etc. I don't know. If you were rich, you could afford a person to fix that. Poor people. This is basically how Dubai was built almost overnight. Actual smart homes. The Alexa, Google Home market is bringing it more mainstream, but for decades the wealthy elite have had smart home functionality through companies like Crestron. 
The controls go far beyond controlling your lights and thermostat, and integrate with more technologies. Access. Money buys you access to people, places and events. It also buys you inaccessibility. I know a couple of billionaires. Both have yachts. That way they can get away from everyone else and just bring in the people they want to spend time with. The planet isn't that big, so my friend said he kept bumping into the same people all over the place. Gstaad, Barbados, wherever. Same crowd of loaded people in the same restaurants and hotels. In the end he bought a yacht, kitted it out like he wanted it, and just flew in his pals. Politicians. The poor know about this, they also know they can't afford it. College admissions for their kids. Health and happiness. Seriously. My ex-wife's family was uber wealthy and for a few years I got to experience a slice of how the other half live. It really is like a club. But staying on topic, health, everyone had a ton of meds, minor things you wouldn't pay any attention to they had meds for. Red skin from the sun? Meds. Going though a tough month at work, they got pills for anxiety at the drop of a hat by their family doctor who was on speed dial. School stressing you out? You now have ADHD, here's meds to focus. The more money you have, the less of a doctor you have and more of a legal drug dealer you get. As for the happiness part, that just comes with the comfort of wealth. Their house was massive, and in the quiet, gorgeous countryside outside of the city. There's so much you don't consider when you live middle to lower class. Noise is non-existent. You get so used to it living in a city or even in the suburbs. Their house, couldn't see the neighbors, can't hear anything except birds chirping. The street was so far from the house you couldn't hear the cars driving by. It was peace and silence. The thing is, it's exponential. If you're healthy and happy, you can work better, think clearer, and that leads to better life decisions that result in you making more money. The cycle repeats. They treated their health as an investment. If they were healthy, they made more money. If they made more money, they could afford to be healthier. Gold pills that make your poop golden colored. I am not even making it up. Look it up. Homes built into old nuclear missile silos. Citizenship. You are an absolute legend for making it to the end. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button. And if you can't get enough, consider subscribing. See you around.